Remy Ma has an interesting career story, being that her music seemed to have two lives and both of those lives were very short-lived. In both of those times, feuding seemed to overshadow Remy as an artist. Remy rose to the spotlight as a member of the Terror Squad, which was a hip-hop collective consisting of other rappers like Fat Joe and Big Pun. Remy was the only woman in the group. The collective made their presence known with the now classic 2004 hit, Lean Back which landed in the number one spot. Remy's solo career didn't have that same prosperity, although songs such as Conceited and Whatever would gain some traction on hip-hop radio. Remy would have some unforeseeable issues with her debut album, There's Something About Remy, based on a true story, released in 2006. To little fanfare, with Remy ultimately being upset with how the label handled the album, resulting in many disagreements and arguments with her label. It obviously wasn't the breakout moment she had anticipated. Remy Ma was involved in many feuds, most notably one with Foxy Brown that began in 2004, and even ended up with multiple alleged physical altercations. The feud has persisted, even with Foxy releasing a diss towards Remy as late as 2017. After Remy Ma's debut album stalled, she decided to keep working on music, and as she was gearing up for her second album, she found her way into legal trouble. In July 2007, Remy was arrested for shooting Makita Barnes Joseph at a Manhattan night spot. She was found guilty on assault, weapons, and attempted coercion. In May of 2008, she was sentenced to eight years in prison, even though Remy claims that the shooting was an accident. While in jail, she released a few mixtapes. She also took notice of the current female rap scene, and she acknowledged what she felt was a diss from Nicki Minaj. In 2007, Nicki dropped the song Dirty Money, which says, Tell that bitch with the crown to run it like Chris Brown. She won three rounds, I'ma need a hundred though, like Chinatown. Bitches better bow down. Oh, you ain't know? Bitches better know, now. I got a gun, let her know that I'm the one. Which Remy felt was about her. Although there has been speculation that the diss is also about Lil' Kim. It's worth noting that beforehand, Remy had dropped a track proclaiming herself the queen of rap. On the track I'm, she says, I'm the queen of rap and there's none higher. Which is why she might have felt the line from Nikki was directed to her. Nikki rarely confirms who her disses are about. She is quoted saying that she doesn't make diss records, she makes hit records with disses on them. The funny thing is, there are even rumors that Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma had some type of relationship going on back then, which were shut down. She also sent love to Nikki and said there's no beef. However, in a 2010 interview, the tune would switch. Remy Ma said, To this day, I still feel like the song is a stab at me. I'm going to diss Minaj back for that one. And boy, did she keep her word. She even reportedly confronted Nikki about the line in person at the time of its release. After Remy's release from jail, she shouted Nikki out for sending her love during her time away. Even when you get to people like Nikki throughout my entire bid, numerous times I've seen interviews she's done where she like, Free Remy, or tell Rem holla at me, she said. So I could definitely say on my behalf, I haven't gotten any shade from any of them. Old school, new school, nothing. Remy even called Nikki a wonderful woman in one of her interviews. She also remixed a few Nikki songs, such as Only and Truffle Butter in 2016. Remy Ma would gain momentum in her career again after featuring on the Fat Joe song All The Way Up, which eventually went three times platinum, becoming Remy's first platinum record. She then sent out love to Nicki for winning a BET award that year. Things slowly began to turn for the worse after the track Money Showers was released later that year, with Remy taking direct aim at her opponent. Claiming she the queen, what? Not hardly. Who the fuck gave you your crown, bitch, Steve Harvey? Remy then threw digs about a ghostwriter in a freestyle, and soon after Nicki would unleash two verses on the song Swalla and Make Love. In Swalla, she says, I gave these bitches two years, now your time's up. Bless her heart, she throwing shots, but every line sucks. But it was really make love that generated the most buzz. Oh, you the queen of this here? One platinum plaque, album flopped, bitch where? You see silly rabbit to be the queen of rap. You gotta sell records, you gotta get plaques. S, plural like the S on my chest. Now sit your ass down, you gotta F on your test. Which many assume to be reference towards Remy getting her first platinum record that year. And the collaborative album she dropped with Fat Joe, not being a commercial hit. Two days later, Remy Ma unleashed a scathing seven-minute diss track titled Sheether that set the internet ablaze. 
It mentions everything and digs deep, from her family to her alleged surgeries to her alleged behind the scenes antics. She there was a moment well received by hip hop culture, which hadn't really had such a big female rapper feud in a while that involves such an explosive diss track. She follows Sheether by releasing a second diss track called Another One, which didn't get the same response. She even appeared on Wendy Williams in Funeral Attire, stating that Nicki had been doing shady things behind the scenes, which prompted her to release the diss. Nicki's response took a while, and many thought she may not respond, and some argue that she should have never responded. Nicki is a more commercial rapper, Remy has a history in battle rapping, so her disses and conviction work much better on battle rap songs and diss songs. Nicki did eventually respond with No Frauds alongside Lil Wayne and Drake, which she got some criticism for because it was a very commercial song, it wasn't the strongest diss, and she also had a supporting cast. In a way, the Remy Ma Nicki feud kind of mirrors Pusha T and Drake to me. Both of the diss tracks by Pusha and Remy were effective in what they set out to do. And I don't really think there was a way that Nicki or Drake could compete with the initial impact these disses made. And in Nicki's case, it's kind of a double-edged sword. While I think her maybe not responding would have been a better option, she likely would have gotten pushed back for not responding because that's just the way of diss tracks in hip hop. She was already getting flack for the amount of time it took to respond. And being that Nicki has referred to herself as the queen of rap and given her success and experience, I do think an expectation was placed upon her to respond, what you know is fair. Now Remy definitely became too pushy about this beef, where every interview, every song, every award show, it was something relating to Nicki. And it's never a good idea to have supporters that don't support you for you, but instead support you to spite someone else. In 2017, Remy dethroned Nicki's seven year run as the best female hip hop artist at the BET Awards. And she opens up the acceptance speech by reciting Sheether, Retrospectively, I do feel like this award was given to Remy off of the explosiveness of Sheether, because it's not like Remy had a collection of running songs or anything. You could also argue that Nicki's 2017 music wasn't the strongest, however it's still much more prevalent than Remy's music. Nicki also made a lot of posts about her accomplishments during this time. This beef and the criticism she got seemed to really get to her, to the point that she had to remind people of what she's achieved in her career. Remy would eventually become a reality TV star, and while she teased a debut album, continuously, even releasing buzz singles Wake Me Up with Lil' Kim, Melon and Magic with Chris Brown, and Company with A Boogie, the album never came. The album was reportedly titled Seven Winters, Six Summers. Somewhere along the lines, Remy was removed from the Columbia Records website, prompting people to believe she had been dropped. In 2020, she announced that she had changed the name of her album to her birth name, Reminis. And well, we all know about Nicki Minaj and her career, so there's no need for updating. So as the saying goes, it can be said that Remy won the battle and Nicki won the war. Because while Sheether had an impact on both of their careers and public image, it only sparingly gave Remy an edge, especially since she didn't have her own bigger songs coming out and really capitalizing on all the hype. Remy has gone on record saying that she's not really proud of Sheether, like people would expect her to be. It just bothers me that this record that I put out where it's literally picking apart a female went so viral. And every media outlet wants to talk about it and pick it up, she said, admitting that she believes the two could have made just as much buzz from a collaboration track. She reportedly added that she believes things would pan out completely differently had they joined forces together instead. I don't regret Sheether, but I'm not particularly proud of it, she said. Nikki has also gone on record saying that she respected that Remy put her issues on wax, even though she obviously wasn't fond of the diss.